Hey guys, welcome to Punky's World. We're going to talk about the movie Till. Um, it was basically the Emmett Till story, although it was mostly focused on his mother. Now, I wonder what I'm doing. I'm separating chicken into meals. Oh, don't mind me. while I was talking, I could do something with my hands. Um, I'd like to get this nice and rusty and cut off a certain part of two certain men who did what they did down the jail, but we won't go there. Um, I don't care what race you are. That is horrendous. Um, and what that mother adored is horrendous. Okay, I'm going to try to, well, it's not suitable for children, I'll tell you that. This boy, he was a boy, he was 14. Between 1955, he's even more of a boy than a 14 year old is today. <clears throat> you know, Money, Mississippi to visit family. I'm sure, you know the story. Um, the movie was unbelievably acted. It was <coughs> an idiot. Why did I say that? Oh, because I was thinking about the producer. What did Goldberg produce it? She can be an idiot at times. But I have to say she's a great actress. And she produced one hell of a movie. Um, that's where I was going with that. I was I was thinking some stuff that happened on the view. Sorry about that. The movie was, like I said, terrific. The acting. I, I think the woman that played uh, Mamie Till Mobley needed to win the Academy Award for Best Actress, honestly. Um, Whoopi played the grandmother. We'll do three on that one. Um, and again, her acting. But then again, Whoopi's a great actress. Maybe because she's she can be a little maybe not an idiot. That was the wrong word. I don't know what I was thinking. Um, different at times. I think it takes away from what she can do. You know, because the woman's amazing. As an actress, there's no question. And it's not like she gave herself a starring role, you know? She really didn't. She played the grandmother, and the grandmother was not, she didn't have a lot of lines. Because it was about Mamie. And all I kept thinking about was my great grandmother's name was Mamie. Um, Mamie Schmidt. Another thing that I kept thinking about during, you know, afterwards, is that, well, first of all, I failed to understand because I wasn't raised that way how you could hate another human being. So much. That you could not only murder them, but disfigure a child like that. <coughs> it broke every bone in his face. Every tooth was knocked out. Um, the bones in his face were so badly broken, okay, that one of his eyes was sitting on his cheek. Really? How do you do that to any human being, let alone a child? I don't care what color they are or what supposed infraction they committed on you. I just, I can't, 
understand how how that happens. infraction that person may have committed a trespass that may person may have committed on you depending on your religious beliefs um, Um, so the that proceeding, like I said, requires a process. How could you do that to another human being, let alone a child? They threw him in the um, Tallahassee, which, you know, we say Big River, Mississippi, you could say Mississippi River, but actually Tallahassee is pretty big too. Um, into the Tallahatchie River. And he wasn't found for four days. So when he was sent home to his mother, and I remember reading this in a book, the smell of that poor child's decomposing body, not to mention the stench of the river, because it was my understanding it was a combination of both, um, stunk up that whole end of the city of Chicago because I also saw it on a documentary. Because it took them four days to find him in the hot Mississippi August sun. Mississippi's warm enough. But Mississippi in August, ooh, that'll decompose you in a hurry. He was, um, and I think we remember saying this as I'm watching a movie and uh, showing her touching his body. And I said, oh my God. I wouldn't touch him too hard because he was he was bloated. Um, and that's from the gases. In our bodies. It's a natural part of the process of decomposing or being deconstructed back down to what you were. And that's really all that means. Um, it sounds, you know, the word decomposition sounds horrible. Um, and this not pleasant to smell, not pleasant to look at, as we all know, because we've all come across animals that were no longer with us. And um, but in this case, you also have. But he was also very bloated. He looked like a very fat person. He did not look like the little boy he went down there as. He, um, it was horrific. They sent him back in a very simple box. Which did you expect them to do? Anything else from Mississippi for a black child? Hell no. Um, sent him back at all. She had to fight for that. You know, say what you want about the NAACP, but they got the job done in that case in terms of getting him home and making sure she was safe in Mississippi testifying that that was her child. Because the last insult added to injury was the fact that the defense tried to claim that they couldn't even prove the body was Emmett Till. 
Really? Oh, M. G. Are you kidding me? So, let's have a seat and talk about the rest of this. Um, I wasn't being disrespectful by doing that. I just did not want to forget to do that. Um, and I figured I could put something in my hands while I was talking about this horrific case. Um, that one's done. This child was so savagely beaten. One side of his face was gone. Then he was shot in the head. And like I said, they had insult to injury, they said. <coughs> How do you know that's him? And the sheriff just kind of said, I don't know if the person was black or white. Give me a break. Give me a break, Mr. Sheriff. You didn't care because you knew he was black, Mr. Sheriff. It was horrendous. Um, the men were found not guilty, and a year later, paid a thousand dollars by Luke Magazine, where they admitted their guilt. Because, of course, we have double jeopardy laws in this country. Oh, I think our double jeopardy laws need to be. different, you know? And they use the N word like it was nothing. Um, and I won't use the word, will not use the word. Um, <coughs> in fact, there was a scene in the courtroom where the defense handed the mother a piece of paper. She said, what's this? And he said, a summons. Well, she's already in court to testify, you moron. And, um, what that is after <coughs> and um he said i thought you up at the end words could read it. well i remember thinking this is exactly what i was thinking well if there are any n words in, in that room they certainly aren't her it's you because the word literally means ignorant So, and that's what I was taught. I was taught that the word means ignorant. And that, it, it, this is what my mother taught me. The word means ignorant. And it better applies to the white people who actually call black people that. Um, that's how I was raised. Um, so when I did, <laughs> I'll tell you that after. Uh oh, I'm unbuttoning. I'll take care of it in a minute. Um, And I, I just, I can't fathom. The only thing that really bothered me in the movie was they showed him whistling at her, which it's been disputed, it's been disproven, and they shouldn't have done that. Plus, he was from Chicago, where there, there weren't, where people were nicer, although there were still issues, like right at the beginning when he was getting a wallet and shoes to go on his trip, a man walked up to his mother while Emmett was looking at wallets, and his mother had 
the shoebox in her hand and said, there are more shoes in the basement, you know. Meaning because you're black, you may not be able to afford decent shoes and that's where you should shop if you're black. Ridiculous. Um, I remember studying um, like the civil rights movement from like the civil war or post civil war, you know, the antebellum era. I remember studying like the civil rights movement and the history of slavery and all that stuff. Um, and learning about and seeing pictures of um, separate bubblers, well, that's what I call it, <coughs> it's a drinking fountain for black or African American people, um, and separate bathrooms, they couldn't sit at lunch counters, um, <laughs> with white folks, it was total segregation, and, um, not being able to understand it, you know? And my father was about two and a half years younger than Emmett. And I remember asking my dad about like that time period. And he said, you know, there were more problems with like school integration and racial stuff in Boston, you know, there were protests and things going on in Boston, but not here in the country. Here in the country, you really didn't, you really didn't experience it, you know? Um, I have a uh, picture, which is is an embarrassment to the entire family. Um, it was a, a very big embarrassment to my dad because it was his father and a buddy of his in blackface, which is a very racist thing to do. Was a very racist thing to do back in that time period, which we were able to date the picture because it was a political poster. Up in the background of the picture, and we were able to date the picture through that political post. <coughs> and um, I have the picture. You know, it's my grandfather. It's times going by. Um, I don't approve of what he did, or his friend did. My father said, quote, I hate that picture. That's disgusting. Because his mother wouldn't have raised him like that. You know, and my parents didn't raise me like that. So I got my DNA back. One of the first matches that I got was that of an African-American man. And I said, huh. You know, I, I wasn't in the least bit bothered by it. I was intrigued. I'm still intrigued by that match. I still want to know. I know he fits in on Dad's paternal side somewhere. He, which is funny to my, funny for my grandfather. What a slap! Ha ha ha. Anyway, um. Anyway, um, I think, well, what had to have happened 
is that one of my ancestors at some point married an African-American person, male or female, and had children with that African-American person. And this man is a descendant of one of those children. And therefore, we are related, although I am not at all African-American. Um, but I'm certainly in no way ashamed to say I have an African-American cousin, because I do. Actually, I think I have a couple of them. Um, I just want to know where he fits. I want him in my tree, but I can't put him in my tree until I know where he fits. But he didn't have a, he didn't have an extensive tree for me to follow. Um, but anyway, and I thought that could have easily been that relative of mine. You know, like his ancestor. Well, his, yeah, it could have been, you know what I mean? But for the grace of God that we were born here in the North, you know? And I remember in school, there was only one African American child in my school. One. And all I could think, and I loved him. He was my little buddy. His best friend was a little boy who wore hearing aids. He was brilliant, but he needed to be in special ed because he was virtually deaf. And um, he was white as snow. <laughs> and uh, I mean, pale as a ghost. And they were best friends. And I asked my teacher, and I was telling my mother this much later. How do you think Sammy feels? You know, because he's the only black child in school, you know? It wasn't meant in any way to be racist. I wasn't raised that way, as I said. It was meant as an honest question in concern for a fellow student and a good friend of mine, because I couldn't imagine what I was doing was putting myself in his shoes. But she said, we don't talk about that. And I was like, okay. And my mother said to me, she's, and when I told my mother about it as an adult, she said, why not? I said, I don't know. I said, all I know was I was putting myself in his shoes, thinking about if I looked different from every other person around me, how I would feel. That's why I asked the question. It wasn't mean. And she made me feel bad. Don't get me wrong, I love this teacher. And I know what she was trying to do. I understand what she was trying to do as an adult. But, you know, so you think about those things when, when you're watching that. And like I said, best actress, best picture, all of it. I should have gone to that movie. But anyway, that's just my opinion. The direction was amazing. The way when she passed out, when they came to tell her that Emmett had been lynched and he was dead, and they backed the camera up like several feet into the room behind where she was. Just incredible directing. Um, it adds to the drama. You know, you can see her in the paper. I'm trying to wake her up. Um, she, like I said, incredible acting. She, um, you could literally see when she got her strength as she's looking at his body. She stood up. You could just see on her face. She was resolute, and she said to her fiance, who she stayed married to for 44 years until his passing, as an old man in his 80s. Um, and, um, she, said, she handed him the keys to her place, um, they didn't live together yet, he didn't do that back then, um, said, 
have my mom's there, have my mom show you his best suit and get a black dress. Right. Excuse me, that Emmett would approve of. Um, and um, for me, because he needs to be, because he, he needs to be seen in his best suit. He, he just looked at her and said, seen? He's in no condition to be seen. She said, I want people to see what they did to my baby boy. And the funeral director said, can I at least clean him up a little bit? She said, no, I want people to see what was done to him. Uh, the pictures are online if you can stomach them. I made myself look. And actually, if you watch the movie, and that's the reason I really made myself look at him closely. I've seen him from a distance, but to really look at them was because I wanted to see if what they showed in the movie was what he looked like. They literally took those pictures and created, recreated the damage. And as I mentioned, the damage was, I believe every bone in his face was broken. Every tooth was knocked out. One of his eyes was sitting on his cheek because all the bones were broken. I think the other eye was sunken back a little bit. Um, one of his ears was completely gone because that side of his face had been completely bashed. He'd been shot in the head. Just big, open, yeah, it was horrible. Plus, he was all bloated from having been dead for four days in Mississippi in the heat, as I mentioned. Um, you're going to pee. Holy cow, I've got to turn on the AC. Um, they wanted to cremate him and send him home. She said, like hell. <laughs> More or less. And so... I mean, I just think about the fact that this horrible crime happened in my parents' lifetime. My mother was a year old, and my father was 11 and a half years old. I just, I can't imagine horrible violence like this happening in my parents' lifetime. To think that people hated another race that much in their lifetime. Lynching is now federal crime. It only took till 2022 for the Emmett Till Lynching Act to be approved. Uh, to be uh, not approved. Voted into law. Signed into law. It's like, are you kidding me? What took you nearly 60 years? 55, 65, 66, 67, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, 65, What? Like, W-T-F. Took you so bleeping long. First of all, you shouldn't have to have an anti-lynching act because it's murder. And murder is against the law in all 50 states. And then the majority of them does not have a statute of limitations. Actually, I don't think it does in any anymore. Um, at one time, there was a 20-year statute of limitations on murder in some states. Now, there isn't. Federally, there isn't. Um, so, yeah, that's just lovely to think it took that long. I read that at the end of the... I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? Seriously? Oy. Anyway, 
that boy has a statue. Because his death and Rosa Parks on the bus actually were the ignition point for the civil rights movement. A few years later, you got Brown versus Brown versus Board of Education, which desegregated schools or attempted to. Took a long time to do that. The goal in desegregating schools, by the way, was an equal education because the black schools didn't have their they didn't have as much money, so their stuff was outdated and their buildings were bad, so it was hard to learn in those in that environment and with outdated materials. So they wanted everyone to go to the same school so that they were all all be funded the same way and that African American kids could learn the same as white kids. Some places did a slow integration and some places just have at it. And it didn't work so well. Um, if you want to know more about that, I highly recommend the movie Ruby Bridges. She's still alive, by the way. Um, she was the first black girl to go to the desegregated school in her area. Um, and they chose her for a reason. Because she was super, super bright. Um, and intelligent. Well, it means the same thing, but um, and they knew she would thrive in terms of learning, you know. So they wanted to start with someone who was just off the charts bright, and so they did. Um, One of the issues, going back to Emmett Till, one of the issues was that he was coming down from Chicago and he had only been in Mississippi one other time. He didn't really, his mother tried, tried to tell him, but he didn't fully know how to act around white people in the South. Sad you need lessons on this. Sorry, but if a little boy said to me, oh, you look like a movie star, I would say, thank you so much. Take his change and be on, you know, be on his way. If I'm behind the counter, I'm not going to be offended. Good Lord. It's a compliment, lady. I don't care what color the person is. Didn't your husband and his half-brother see he bleeds the same color we do? And here's a news flash for you ignorant fools. You live in the South. That means your families were masters of slaves, which means your families either had consensual or not so consensual sex with said slaves and have half black children. You have black relatives. More than likely. Mm. Anyway. I do have an extension of my family um, <coughs> that were slaveholders in Georgia. Um, I know this. I think it's horrible, but I also know that it's a part of our history. And for people to rewrite history or to, or to write out parts of their own family history because they're ashamed or because they don't want to admit that they have that in their family? Well, I'm sorry. 
but it's a part of history and we can't do anything about that. And if we don't know our history, we're bound, we're doomed to repeat it. I don't remember who said that, um, who, where that quote came from, but it's a famous quote. So do I want to know that they had slaves? Yes. Do I hope that they treated their slaves well? Absolutely. I have no way of knowing that. I, I don't, you know, it's not me. I didn't do it. They just happened to be related to me. Why should I feel not, well, I was going to say shame over what someone else did. Do I feel well, that it's wrong and badly that it happened at all in any family? Of course. But I'm not going to deny that it happened in mine. I'm not going to do it. It's a, it's a part of my tree, it's a part of my family's history, and I will accept it as that. History. To hopefully never repeat itself. And hopefully all the segregation and the... Just can't understand it. Excuse me. And there's still so much prejudice in the South. It's sad. And it's funny, living here in the North, we don't see way up here in the Northeast, you know, we don't see very many African American people. Um, my mother was raised, you know, that human beings are human beings regardless of their color. Um, they were on a trip around New England and they were stopping for gas. My grandfather was pumping gas, and the gentleman got out of his car and began pumping gas. Well, my mother and her sisters had never seen an African-American person before. And this man was very dark. Um, because in their little farm town, they just, didn't, they just weren't there. You know, they were sort of coming out of their little poor, you know, farm bubble. And my aunt without thinking about it because she didn't know any better said daddy that monkey's pumping gas my grandfather spun around my mother still tells told the story up until the end of her life and he said that is a man he is a person just like you and me his skin is just a different color I mean, he was absolutely mortified. And he took that moment to teach her and to teach her right. And I, I already adore my grandfather, and that just made me adore him even more. He was such a good man. And my mother used to tell me all the time when I would watch animal shows and stuff, oh gosh, your grandfather would absolutely love your love of animals. I want a pet. I just don't know what at this point. I want one that I can keep in such a way that I don't have to pay a pet deposit, you know, like a fish or, you know, something like that, where I wouldn't have to pay a pet deposit. So, <clears throat> but anyway, that had absolutely nothing to do with it. Um, well, it did. I was talking about my grandfather. And I'm very proud that my grandfather was that way, you know. At least one of them had some sense. Um,
and the men, by the way, who did that to Emmett Till, were acquitted by a jury of their peers, all white men. And because they were acquitted, we have, as I mentioned, double jeopardy. I think we need to work on our jeopardy laws a little bit. That's just my opinion. Um, you know, so that if someone outright admits it, you know, or, okay, let's work on our Jeopardy laws so that, that at this point, so that if DNA comes back and proves you did it, you should be able to be retried. If there is 100% proof. And that woman should have been tried for murder. She still should be. She's still alive. Yeah, she's old, but I don't care. She lied about that child and admitted to the author of the book that I read that she lied about that child. Um, so, yes, I realize the statute of limitations for perjury has long gone bye-bye. But she could be tried for murder. And federally for lynching. Anyway, that's my opinion. Um, but overall, I would give that movie an A+. Plus. One of the best movies I've seen in a long time. Highly, highly, highly recommend it. Thank you so much for joining me. This has been a long review, but it's okay. Um, please subscribe. God bless you. Have a wonderful rest of your day. We're trying to get to 100 subscribers, guys. Bye-bye. Love you. God bless you.